Hey guys, I just finished the project and I want to show it to you. I took a round 18 inch in diameter wooden panel. It's edge glued and stain grayed and I did a little carving on it and come up with a plaque to hang on the wall. I got this idea from Chris Rader. Chris follows me on Facebook and watches my YouTube channel. Chris recently saw one of my flag videos and he took that information, made his own and it turned out really good. Chris was out and about one day and he came up with his own idea and he shared it with me on Facebook. I really liked the idea and the first person I thought of when I saw this was Tommy, a local canine officer. Tommy's a longtime friend of mine. We used to work together and hunt together. I asked Tommy to send me a profile picture of his dog, Zorro. Tommy sent it to me. I sent the picture to Office Max and had them print it large enough to fit in this 18 inch panel. So I outlined Zorro on the panel, overlaid it with a flag, put a blue line on it, did some torching, a little bit of carving, and this is what I come up with. Okay, here's the finished project. I don't normally show the finished project at the beginning of the video, but I had technical difficulties with my pre-recorded video and I had to trash it. This is basically an 18 inch panel. It's one inch thick, it's solid pine, it is glued together and it is stain grade. And I bought it at Lowe's for 10 bucks. The whole purpose behind this is to make it simple so that pretty much anyone can do it with minimal cost and minimal tools. The only thing I used on this for as far as tools was the Dremel tool with a carving bit and also a hand carving tool. I had the blue paint on hand, I had the urethane on hand, and I had a torch. So it was pretty simple to make. So now that you know what it looks like, I'll go ahead and show you how it's made. Check it out. Okay, I've got this plaque almost ready to start carving with the Dremel tool. I've outlined the canine head with the flag and I've outlined the circle there. Let me show you what I've got so far. This is what I started with. And basically I just outlined the circle and kind of used this to center it up. But then I took Zorro and laid him out here, centered it up, and just outlined it. And now, this is what I have so far. Now you can see the uh, red would be represented by burn here. I have burn written. I've got the stars outlined. I want to go ahead and lay it out so that I know, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Dremel this section, everything around the canine head and inside the circle. I'm going to Dremel that down at about a quarter of an inch, I think. And I'm going to burn each strip that needs to be burned or each stripe burn this I tried to do this dark enough so that I could see it even after I burned it but I'm not happy with this circle so this circle here this outside circle would be the perfect circle this one would be the imperfect circle so anyway basically I used this paper to draw the circle but I wasn't happy with it because it's off slightly. So what I'm gonna do is sand this circle off. And I made me a little tool here, and I don't remember what you call these, but I don't have one of these actual tools. So I just made this. I found the dead center here, put a nail in this big paint paddle, and now I put a little notch where I wanted it, and I followed that around with a pencil and that will make a perfect circle. Once I get the perfect circle made, then I'm gonna start the Dremel, using the Dremel tool, and I hope this makes sense. But again, if you wanna make a per perfect circle, that's a good way to do it. Any type paint paddle or paint stick. Just put a notch in it and follow it around. I just shortened my paint paddle. So I don't have to worry about everything that's on my workbench here as I spin it around. So I've got this off now, good enough so that I'm not getting the two lines mixed up. A bit of, bit of a perfectionist, so. And now you just follow that around in that notch. All right. Okay, now I have a perfect circle to follow with the Dremel tool. 
and there is a hole right in the dead in the center, a very small hole with that nail, and I'll be able to remove most of that. You're not really going to notice it, especially once all this stuff's burned and, and carved. So I think now I'm going to start with the Dremel. That way I can at least make the line with the Dremel so that when I go back and burn this, I don't have to worry about trying to find this line again. Okay, here I'm simply following the lines with my Dremel tool. And notice I use my left hand for support. It makes it a lot easier to follow the lines. And also notice Maggie there helping me on the workbench. All right, so I've got the canine outlined and the circle. So now I'm gonna take out all this, approximately a quarter of an inch. And then I'll work on burning the wood there. Okay, here I'm using the Dremel tool just to remove the wood about a quarter of an inch deep around Zorro's head. Uh, the Dremel tool does a great job. It does it fairly quick, but it does leave it pretty rough. I'll have to come back with a little sanding drum on the Dremel tool after this to kind of smooth it up a little. But I'm going to follow that up later with a hand carving tool. Keep in mind if you do have a router, it would go quicker and smoother with a router. I just want to keep this simple to minimal tools. I've started here with this sanding drum here on the Dremel tool just to get the roughness off. Also the bit that I've been using is the carving and engraving number 192. It's much like the ones I use on the flags, the 105 and 106, but the 192 is a tad bit bigger and more aggressive. So it takes it out a good bit quicker. Okay, I've got this thing ready to carve this part. I don't want to have to burn this after this is finished. So I want to get this part done. Right now I'm going to burn the stripes that need to be burned. I think I'm going to go ahead and get that part done because I can come back with a hand carving tool for this part. I'm going to use this piece of oak to help keep the line straight here. I should be able to torch this pretty good. Get close to that line. I'll just move the piece of wood there. Oak will not burn as fast as this pine. So that's how I'm going to keep the line straight there. And I'll flip it over and go to this line and burn it. This is doing a good job. I do suggest a smaller torch. If you're going to do much of this, it'd be worth the purchase. It wasn't very expensive. I'll finish this out, and hopefully it's going to work out just as planned. All right, here I'm just finishing out the stripes and the union and the outside edge of the panel with this torch. This is a butane torch. It's made by burns o -Matic. It's a great little detailed torch. Also, the size of the flag used for this project is the same as the 13 by 24 and a half inch flag that I make. I use the same template for the stars. All right, now I'm almost finished with this thing. One of the last things I wanted to do was do the hand carving on the recess part. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So once I finished painting the blue and it dried, I went ahead and clear coated one little coat of the whole thing. That way I could work with this and not smear this charred part. So it's kind of protected. You know, it did flake a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it is protected. It hadn't smeared everywhere. So once I get this part finished, then I'm gonna go back and blow it all off and probably just clear it just like it is. And other than throwing a hanger on the back of it, it'll be finished. All right, guys, I finished carving this thing last night, and it turned out pretty good. Check it out. See what it looks like. I've already got one coat on it, and I'm going to put one more coat on it, and I should be done. All right, guys, that's it. Pretty quick and easy project, and also very inexpensive. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.